All right, so this should be working. I'm gonna put my hands into the camera frame. There we go, it's in the camera frame. And maybe I will see that in the live stream. And it looks like this should be working. I'm gonna put my, there we go. Okay, so that was very meta. Um, let me go ahead and do something interesting here. Hi, uh, welcome to the live stream about live streaming. And I hope to make this concise and not ramble on a lot about live streaming um, while I'm live streaming and use the phrase live streaming a lot. Okay, so uh, this is uh, for some of you who have expressed an interest in maybe doing a live stream with me and trying to show off the morph. So I'm gonna show up how show how I set this up on my end. Um, I have kind of a complicated setup, so um, the cool thing is, is that it actually works. And um, hopefully your setup does not have to be this complicated, but it might be because you're a musician and you have sound stuff that you wanna do uh, that's not necessarily just in software and you wanna be able to move audio from your software to the live streaming uh, software. It all gets very, uh, tangled. So here's what I did. Um, let's go ahead and switch to the screen only and we're going to go into an infinite loop. Prepare to go. There we go. That's cool. Um, so I have this software called OBS. Um, OBS is open broadcasting. Whoa, there I am again. I told you this was going to be meta. Um, and Let's see, we have open, uh, how about I just do obsproject.com. OBS Studio um, is sort of the de facto standard. It's an open source project. There's uh, commercial ones out there that do this sort of thing um, for your setup, uh, whether it's Mac, Linux, or uh, Windows. And then you open up OBS once you install it, and you're going to get something like a, a down here in the bottom left, you are going to get a, I'll bet I take you down there, uh, a scene down here at the bottom left. Um, and the scene will have some sources like a video capture device, a display. So what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to capture your, you want to be able to capture the, um, the screen itself but then you also want to be able to capture the cameras that you have um, and you can put them all together in these little boxes. Um, the display itself, you can uh, just choose, if you have multiple monitors, you can select the monitor. So if we go ahead and take a look at the display capture, um, we can double click on it and it's going to show you a preview of that on screen. And then it's uh, going to ask you which display, I only have one set up. So, and then you can crop it um, if you only want to show a portion of the screen. And you can actually do um, multiples of this. So we can, I can show you an example of that. Um, I can add a display capture. Uh, and the cool thing is, is that this is going to be like, say, I'll call it display capture zoom and say, okay. And uh, then I want to crop it um, manually, and then I can do a crop left of, say, zero, crop top of like, I don't know, 800, uh, cancel. I want to do 800, and crop right of 800, and so now it's just focusing on that bottom left, and now it kind of zooms in on that. And if I want to get rid of that, I can use the little eye to hide that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hide this display capture because it's getting very confusing. Um, so that's the scene. And in a scene, you can build up all of your cameras and place them uh, where you want to. You can just click on them and move them around. Uh, sometimes it can be difficult because you end up grabbing the wrong one. Um, and that's because it's this one's on the top. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that zoom one because I want to remove it. Yes. Um, so I have a logo, which is just a an image file down here at the bottom. 
and that's it's the PNG with a uh, transparent background. And then I also have uh, this camera, which is a Logitech um, C930 or something like that, uh, popular 1080p webcam. Um, and then I've got another one of those facing down here on my desktop. Um, so it brings all those together quite nicely. And so once we, you know, have the display, then we can switch over to an application that we want to show. And now it's going to show my application and it's going to show my cameras. Okay, so that's just sort of setting up the, the visual environment. Um, then the other things you wanted to be able to do is go down here to the bottom right and click settings. And uh, that's the same as preferences. So it's command comma on Mac and probably control comma on Windows uh, and Linux. Uh, so then there's lots of uh, preferences in here that I didn't really worry about most of them. The output one was important, or let's see, no, the video one was important because before I started streaming, I needed to set my resolution. Um, and let me go ahead and let you see that a little bit better. Okay, there we go. You are looking at that. I did turn that on. All right, good. Um, so let's see, video. Uh, you set the re resolution of the canvas. That, that's going to be the resolution of your stream. If you don't set it to basically 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720, then YouTube will probably complain a little bit, but it should still work. Um, a lot of times the base is going to be, by default, the size of your monitor. Um, so you probably will want to change that preference. And then let's see, then there is output, which sort of just sets up the video bit rate. Um, if you are really into that type of stuff, you can mess around with it. I didn't touch it. Um, and uh, let's see, then there's the stream. We'll get to that. Um, and audio. Now, the audio one is the one that I struggled with the most because I have, as you can see, um, on my desktop, I'm going to go ahead and go to just the rover and pick up this camera so you can see what I did here. So on my desktop, I have lots of stuff. I have this analog synth. I have some uh, cute succulents here. And, uh, and then I have another analog hardware synth that you know uses MIDI. Um, this one's using MIDI too. So I've got lots of MIDI devices including the cameras, right? So there's another camera. Um, you can, of course, use your desktop camera on your, your laptop, but that's just kind of much less uh, fun. Um, and let's get some more video feedback going there because that's the best. Um, and then all the USB devices. Oh, God. Okay, are you prepared? This is a horror show. As we go behind the computer. Everything looks so tidy with all those succulents. Say goodbye, tidy desk. Dun, dun, dun. There's a horror show back here. Um, I have lots of USB devices. So in order to just sort of clean up the desk for the sake of presentation, I've got things taped to the back of the monitor because that's the last thing anybody's going to see unless they watch this. Um, but as you can see in my audio device, I've got this uh, ESI. Uh, let's see, it's uh, eight input, six out, I guess. Um, USB. Um, and so I've got the MIDI coming out of it for uh, MIDI hardware stuff. I was using a Volca, and then I switched over to the Geode. Um, so I can do hardware MIDI. Um, that's USB is, of course, for the, for the Mac. And, uh, and then I have the stereo outs from this going to yet another interface, another USB interface, the propeller heads. Uh, and it's basically just a stereo deal. Um, I didn't want to... Uh, uh, you know, get another bigger interface. I didn't need it. All I really need this for is to take inputs. Um, and I'll get to that. Hopefully you can see all that stuff. There's the propeller head. Just say, it's a stereo two in, two out, whatever cheapo interface you have. Um, so, um, the, the crux of this is how do you use a multi-input interface like this, uh, ESI thing, or a Focusrite, or Motu, or whatever, and how do you get all those inputs working uh, through your DAW software, such as Ableton Live, Logic, whatever. Um, get all that stuff working, and have it be um, audible, 
and, uh, to the stream. And that was really the yucky part. So there are, of course, things like um, there are, of course, things like black hole and sound flower and things like that. And those allow you to digitally transfer audio from one software application to another. And in theory, you should just be able to run everything through, say, in this case, I'm using Bitwig Studio. I should be able to have all my audio come in here from all my devices. I can go ahead and play that. Um, uh, so right now you're hearing uh, the analog synth, uh, the, the modular, you're hearing, uh, and really the modular is just doing the kick and toms. You're hearing the bass with the geode, and then you're hearing software stuff. Uh, theoretically, you should be able to just transfer this stuff digitally from Bitwig over to OBS and have it spit out to the stream. I could never get it to work, whether or not I used Black Hole or Soundflower. Um, and, it was, and so what I did is I just did the analog version of that. So looking at the preferences, I will go ahead to screen only and go to uh, audio. And uh, again, the sample rate I just set to low because everything's chewing up CPU. Um, the mic or auxiliary audio, so that's basically your um, audio source for this, and that's gonna be the, the inputs in the balance. Um, when I just tried to set it to the U86XT, uh, which is my multi-input output device, um, all I would get was the stuff that was coming in. I didn't get any of the software stuff. Um, so it's just not all that smart. So I ended up having to use that extra interface to use as a stereo input device and uh, and send audio to the stream that way. Um, if you don't have multiple interfaces, probably if you're just using everything in the box, the simplest thing you can do is if your uh, Mac has an input um, or your computer has an input, like a mic input, you can just actually loop it eighth inch stereo from out to in. Um, and that will just save you grief. Um, it may upset your digital purity, but it will save you grief. Um, and then the monitoring device, which is something you can use to, you can actually hear what the stream, the people in the stream are hearing. Um, I set that to built-in output. Um, so if I wanted to monitor what you were hearing right now with all the latency, I could uh, just plug in headphones into my Mac. And, um, that is kind of that's kind of all the setup I have um, the other cute things that I did I can go and show you what I did that the screen plus overhead I'm gonna put everything on so obviously I have this morph here um, the uh, I set up just the bare interface to work as a custom controller so I have uh, you can go to the Sensel app And uh, so I added an innovators overlay and called it the OBS scene switch and just set up uh, five buttons on here to trigger the letters A, B, C, D, and E. And you can see in my Sensel uh, app, I've got those buttons there. And so I, s instead of using the innovators overlay, I'm just using the bare overlay. So I have the no overlay set up to load innovators overlay. So now it just acts as if there's an innovators overlay. And now I have those nice five buttons that allow me to switch scenes. And the way you set up scenes in OBS is um, you initially have your, your first one that you create uh, by default. And that's gonna have, you know, in this case, I have the two cameras and the screen and uh, the logo. Uh, and then, so I just duplicated that. That was the easiest way to, to kind of do that um, across all the scenes and then so when I switch a scene, I turn. I just sort of use the um, little eye logo there to turn this, turn the piece on and off. So as I switch, um, I have these nice hot keys to, you know, conveniently get to the part that I want to show the viewer. And uh, then in the preferences, that's where you can set up your hot keys. And by default, nothing's set up because it's open source software. So um, they try to make few assumptions. I guess that's the polite way to put it. Um, and so the other thing is, is that as you add scenes, it will add chunks to this interface. 
Um, so I just simply set them up with A, B, C, and D. So you can, you know, add additional hotkeys to whatever you want. You could have the craziest innovators overlay that you want. Um, I would recommend against it. I prefer five buttons because we have enough complexity going on already. And then the other little trick I did was, as you can tell, um, I've got like the KCRW hardcore uh, side chaining. And uh, what I did is I just created a group for all my audio stuff and left a voiceover track. So um, I've got this little lav mic that I'm using and I've got that coming in an audio channel in Bitwig. And then that is on the group track, I have a simple utility to control volume and I have a uh, modulator for audio sidechain. So I'm just taking the audio in from voiceover and then modulating the amplitude uh, with my voice. And it works marvelously and was incredibly easy to set up. Um, that's one of the reasons why I've been using Bitwig a lot, is because of stuff like that. Um, all right, um, so that is live streaming. Let me go take a look, see if anybody has any questions. Oh my God, it's Winter Woods. What is that guitar behind the laptop? <laughs> That's a live stream story in itself. But as you can see, let me take, pick up my roving camera here and uh, going to the, the rover only. There we go. So as you can see, I have a purple guitar up there. That is a 1980, probably an 88 or 89 Yamaha RGX 612S which is for shredding. Um, I really like the sound of that thing. It's got, you know, lots of pickups on it and it's cool and it's kind of easy to play. And it's purple. And it, like, I got that guitar before I even ever had long hair. So, um, and then you go over here and you're like, wait, what, wait, what's this? What, this is another RGX 612S? Well, the problem is, is that one has a stripped thread on the uh, fine pitch e, high E and I, have never been able to find parts. I've never been able to find any sort of um, any sort of uh, way to fix it. Even trying to do like a helicoil or something for like that, something like that for it, just has always ended up into a uh, a big morass of nothing. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to buy a parts guitar. So I found this. You know, I just set up a wish list on our on Reverb.com and eBay, and finally found this one that was cheap relatively not as cheap as i would have liked it but i was like well it's the only way i can fix my guitar and use it as a parts guitar it turns out this is an 87 they used a different tremolo in it so now i've got and it's it's kind of a junky guitar it's totally messed up um i think it would play fine if i got it tuned up i don't know it's one of my my problems maybe somebody can help me with that somewhere out there okay um that's my live streaming setup. I want to keep this brief. It's gone on way too long. I hope you have a lovely afternoon. I hope you're staying safe and uh, germ-free and all that sort of stuff. Okay, take care. All right, uh, so I'm back again. I didn't quite end my uh, streaming stream about streaming because I realize there's a stream I need to embed in this stream that explains how to set up a stream. Um, so uh, let's, with that wonderful introduction, I have a little movie I prepared because I can't show you how to set up a stream. Um, I can't show you how to set up a stream while I'm streaming because the stream already exists. So I just did a pre-prepared movie. So let's go ahead and play that movie. Okay, so here's a quick video embedded in the live stream, recorded earlier, uh, of how to set up the stream itself in YouTube. Uh, this is kind of hard to show while streaming because I've already created a stream. So I want to be able to show this uh, fresh um, as if you're setting it up for the first time. So let's go take a look at that. Um, I can go to OBS and go into the wormhole of feedback. Whoa. And what we want to do is we want to go to the settings down here on the bottom right or uh, command, command comma, control comma. Um, and we want to click on the stream tab. And then 
here's where you select the service. Uh, in this case, I'm doing YouTube. Um, and then server, just leave that as primary YouTube ingest server, probably for more advanced users to uh, change that. And then click on that link. And that's going to take you to the YouTube Live dashboard in your default browser. So assuming you have that set up uh, for your account, it's all good. Uh, and I'm going to go to the live control room because they really want me to do that. Um, so uh, we've got the live control room going. And here's where we set up our new stream. So I'm going to create the title for this which is meta live stream streaming stream. And I'm going to make that unlisted uh, for now. Um, if we were broadcasting public, obviously you'd want to make that public. Um, science and technology, sure, because I'm explaining a piece of technology. And schedule for later, you can uh, schedule for later. And then um, when you're ready to go live, you just start up your software and uh, and then start the stream, and then it'll all just sort of work, in theory. Um, but I'm not going to schedule it for later. I'm going to do it now. And I'm going to upload the custom thumbnail, uh, which I already created. So it's just a, a picture of this camera down here. Um, and actually, I am going to schedule this for later. I'm going to schedule this for 2.30. Uh, and hopefully that's when we actually start this live stream. And no, it's not made for kids, um, even though I'm going to sing Baby Shark as much as possible. And uh, now I'm going to create the stream, and this takes a little bit of time uh, while it calculates, sorts things out. Um, so the stream setup help is, okay, well, download, that's OBS, we've already done that. Um, paste the stream key into your software. This is the important part. Uh, I'm not going to show it, I'm going to copy it. Um, and it says you may also need the stream URL. We don't really need that, I don't think. Um, I haven't needed it previously. So now I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in here. And if you show it, it looks like just a key. It's a bunch of letters and numbers, kind of like a password. But it is a secure thing, so you don't want to hand it out to the public. And press OK. And press Done. So now it's setting up the, the stream. Um, and uh, it's connecting oh right so now it's waiting for me to actually start my stream for my software so then here is where I would press start streaming and um, you know, I can go back to you <coughs> screen only no I want to go to uh, the rover here so I can address you directly and now um, so then you start streaming and that's going to send all of the data from your streaming software to the YouTube servers and stream it out to the world. So that's how you set up the uh, stream itself within YouTube. Okay, so here's a quick video embedded in the live stream, recorded earlier, uh, of how to set up the stream itself in YouTube. Uh, this is kind of hard to show while streaming because I've already created a stream. So I want to be able to show this uh, fresh um, Okay, so now I'm back, and now I am actually going to uh, end the stream and say good afternoon. Hope you've enjoyed this. Um, hope you stuck with it. Hope it's worthwhile on the archive. All right, take care.